y'all, it's Kelly from Dixie Girl and Tumblers, and this week I'm going to show you guys how I did my version of the Tangram. So I had seen all these beautiful cups come through on social media with such attention to detail with the glitter and the vinyl work, and they are so beautiful, and I was so inspired to make one, but anybody that knows me knows I do not have the patience for that, <laughs> and I am real quick to slap some vinyl on a cup and try to make it my design. So that's what I did with the Tangram. So this is my version. This is what I'll go over this week. I'll show you guys laying the vinyl, adding the glitter, the mica swirls, my leopard spots. So I hope that you guys enjoy my design. Please share with me any creations you make. Ask any questions that you have. I'd love to see your work. I would, I'm more than happy to answer questions. And thank you guys for watching. So now we're gonna prep the cup and I use final sand from DIY Epoxy. It takes just a little bit on the cup and I use a maroon scouring pad just to scuff the surface of the cup. And now we're gonna rinse the cup off, dry it with a paper towel and we're ready to get started. So now we're ready to put the vinyl on the cup. I don't spray paint my cup. If you've properly prepped your cup, there's really not much of a need to spray paint it if you're just gonna cover the whole cup in vinyl. So I never spray paint mine if I'm doing a full wrap. And I'm just going to lay it down to see how much excess I can cut off the bottom. I try to save that for future use or sometimes there's enough to make the circle on the bottom of the cup. And I'm gonna get cut it here and try to get a straight line. So, especially in a cup like this where there's lots of lines going on, I'm not going to try to cover the seam, and it definitely is not going to be perfect, but I'd like for it to be as straight as possible. And then I'm just going to lay it down here first and try to line up that top edge, wrapping it around to make sure when I do lay the vinyl down, it's going to, you know, lay pretty straight, and the lines are going to match up pretty evenly. So now I'm going to lay my cup down very carefully and hope that the vinyl doesn't move too much when I'm laying my cup down. And then I'm just going to start to peel off a little strip on the back of my vinyl just so I can adhere that to the cup and then make sure that my vinyl didn't move too much and my lines get off when I was laying the cup down. So I'm gonna cut this little strip off just because it will lay flat when I go to make sure that my lines are still straight. So I'm just gonna press that little strip that I pulled the backing off down onto the cup as straight as possible without moving the cup and hopefully not moving the vinyl too much. And then just make sure that it's still lined up at the top. So you can kind of see here, I'm just using the top line as a guide to make sure that it's still lined up pretty well. And then I'm going to take the backing and I'm just gonna pull it up a little bit off the back and just kind of get it slowly going down the cup. So I don't have a magic way to lay my vinyl. You can, you guys can just kind of see, I just gotta have my little system and that's the way I've been doing it. And it's lots of practice and I promise lots of stripping vinyl off cups. But I just take it and just run my finger down through it, make sure there's no bubbles, and just try to keep the cup and the vinyl as straight as possible. I seem to notice that if I get off once and have to kind of readjust the vinyl, it doesn't do as well the rest of the cup. So I try to just make sure that I start from the very beginning, just going slow, no bubbles, try to make sure there's no creases on either end, and just work my way around the cup. And y'all, this vinyl is from the Vinyl Cottage Shop. April is so awesome. This is actually a custom pattern that I asked her to print for me, but she has tons of patterns. I'll link her shop in the description box below, but definitely go check her out, she's awesome. So a lot of people have noticed that I lay a piece of tape down. I do take a piece of tape and I lay it just off the edge of the vinyl. So I'm gonna have a little bit of an overlap. And the reason that I do that is just because I do not cut very straight lines. I have watched people do it that are very good at it. I am not good at it. So this gives me a little cushion that if my line's not perfectly straight, you're not gonna see this, the cup through it, you're gonna see the other vinyl. Thank you. 
And right about now, your hands are probably getting tired. I know mine usually do just from applying the pressure and trying to do it evenly. So now I'm just going to take my craft knife and run it down the edge um, to take off the excess vinyl. And now I'm just gonna press the vinyl down pretty tight over where I can see the edge of my tape where I've laid it. And then I'm just gonna take my craft knife and just go as closely as I can and use the tape as my guide to cut off the excess here. And then I'm just gonna peel that off. And you can see sometimes you might have to go back and where it didn't cut in certain places. So I'm gonna peel that off and then I'm gonna take the tape off. And now I'm just going back around the rim and just pulling it pretty tight to make sure there's no air bubbles and there's no places where it's not gonna adhere to the top really well. And then I just go back with my craft knife and trim off the excess there. And now I'm just basically looking for any bubbles that are still there. I'll just take the tip of my craft knife and just poke a little hole and it'll let the air out. I use a really sharp craft knife for this. I kind of save my used blades for everything else and make sure I usually have a pretty fresh blade on when I'm doing that. And then the infamous bottom, which I will tell you guys has just taken me a lot of practice. I have messed up so many that have pulled off when I put epoxy on there. They've been bumpy, I couldn't get them smooth. So this is just kind of how I do it, you guys can watch. I just pull it as tight as I can and try to run my finger around the edge to make sure there's no creases that are going to cause it to be bumpy um, it just it just takes me a little bit of time I have to really work out it every cup I do and then I'm gonna go back and trim off the excess so when I put my bottom on I'm actually not gonna just cover that inside circle I'm gonna cover the full bottom of the cup for the most part and so here I just run my fingernail around just to try to make sure any places that where I pulled it too tight and it didn't want to adhere to the cup really well I'm just pressing that down I am using DIY's Artisan Fast Set for this, and I wanted to actually show you guys and go over the measuring here where I measure my epoxy because it's a fairly new product and a lot of people are not familiar with a one to two ratio. You're used to your one to one with normal epoxy. But here I am gonna use five milliliters of part B, the hardener, and I'm gonna use 10 milliliters of part A, the resin. So there's been lots of conversation around it, and DIY actually has a ratio calculator available, but it basically is you're doubling one versus the other. So if you use five of one, you're gonna use 10 of the other. If you use 10 of one, you're gonna use 20. If you use 20, you're gonna use 40, and so on. So I did just wanna go over that real quick um, for anybody that's wanting to use Fast Set or curious how it works. So you guys saw that I mixed up 15 milliliters of epoxy and I don't even use all that. When I just have vinyl on a cup, I really probably don't even use 10 milliliters. Um, especially on this cup too, I'm gonna add a little bit of glitter in this layer and I don't want that to move at all. Now I'm gonna take one of my favorites, Athena, from Peachy Olive Glitter, and I'm just gonna put a little bit in the top, and I'm gonna start to sprinkle it throughout the cup. So on this design, I'm just finding little places that look like the little stars are already there, and there's kind of little sprinkles throughout the vinyl. I just wanna accent that with a little bit of glitter here and there. So I just, there's really no rhyme or reason. Random is better, so I just kinda go with it. And then I also had some little silver stars that I'm gonna throw in also.
Now, I let that dry for about three hours because I did pay attention to the time. And then I went into another coat. And the second coat, I'm going to use 15 of V and 30 of A because we are going to go in and add some mica swirls in this coat. So, I want to have some extra left over to mix the micas with. So I'm just gonna apply a thin coat to the cup and then I'm gonna pour the excess in each one of these little individual cups that you see right there. So now I'm getting ready to mix my micas and these are all from Woody's Goodies. I love their micas. They have beautiful, sparkly micas. They're so pretty. And I'm just trying to pick colors that will coordinate with the cup. So I'm gonna use a black, a white, a purple, this emerald green, and a gold. And I just take my stir stick and just pick up a little bit on the end and mix it in with the epoxy. You can always go back and add more if they're not as concentrated as you want them once you get them on the cup but I can never go back and take it out. So I try to start with a little bit first and I'm just gonna mix those up. Now we're gonna start to add the micas to the cup. And I know that I want the bulk of the leopard spots to be on the front of the cup, away from the seam. So you can see that I kind of start at the top, right where the seam actually is, because that'll be the back of my cup, and the leopard spots will wrap around to the front of the cup. So I'm just taking this little silicone brush. It's like a pencil on the end almost. It's really pointy on the end. And I just take my micas and I just swirl them across. There's really no pattern that I'm trying to do. Just I'm thinking about where my leopard spots are gonna go and just wrap it around the cup just a little bit at a time. I do tend to always start with my darkest color first. And the reason that I do that and end with my lightest sparkliest color is I'm just using the darkest color to get an idea of where my micas are gonna swirl around the cup and then how wide I want the pattern. So I'm thinking about where my leopard spots go. So I need to figure out the width that I want the micas to swirl around. And then also I usually go to the lightest sparkliest color last because if there's areas where I've laid the gold or I've laid the black and it looks too thick or clumpy, I will take that white and lay it inside that to kind of spread it out and make it look, you know, make it blend better with the cup. And I also wanted to mention too, I am using Facet here again. So you can see that it actually gives me plenty of work time without too much movement. So I actually like using Facet if I'm just doing one cup with, uh, with mica swirls because then I can go back, I can always add heat to make them move a little bit more, but I don't get too much movement. And I kind of prefer to do the movement myself instead of the epoxy and the cup do the movement for me. I absolutely love this gold. I love adding it to cups. It's one of my favorite golds. It's so pretty and it's so concentrated. So I can put a little bit on and then with my silicone brush, I can just work it out, swirl it around. It's just so beautiful. I love this gold. This one is Goldilocks by Woody's Goodies. It's one of my favorites for sure. And I will have all these colors listed in the description box below for you guys. And I'm just going back through, just working out any little places that look like it's just gotten too clumpy. I like for this area to be pretty filled in before I go back in and add the white, just because I don't want a lot of movement in the white, but I do like to spread the gold out pretty thin. 
And then I'm just going back with a little black, touching up little areas that I think need a little extra color. So now I'm gonna add my white in. Oh, the snowflake from Goldie's Goodies is so gorgeous, it's so sparkly. So I like to put as much of it on there as I can. I feel inside the mica with it, I will lay it in the gold, in the black, and then I like it to extend out from where my leopard spots are gonna go. So I'll also kind of spread it out on the outside of where I've already laid the other colors. And y'all can see it's just a process here. I just piddle with it and piddle with it until I kind of get them like I want them and they're good and swirly together. And I feel like the, the area is covered and they look like they're just kind of randomly mixed in there. So it's definitely a process. Now, after I let that dry, I am gonna let this cup dry overnight before I go into sanding. So I do like fast set, but I do like to let it dry overnight before I sand. And I'm just gonna create a rim. I'm using a sanding block that I get off of Amazon. And a lot of people ask me after my last tutorial what grit I was using. I have them in 60, 80, 120, and 220, but I prefer the 120. That's what I end up gravitating to and using most of the time. And you can see I'm just creating a real thin rim. I'm trying to be very careful with this one because if you sand vinyl, it does tend to look white at the top where it was printed. So I do try to be really careful and just create a really thin rim where my next layer of epoxy can adhere to. And then I'm just gonna go back over any areas that are rough, but on this cup, there really weren't that many. I'm just really trying to clean up the rim here mostly. So here I'm just gonna go over the whole surface of the cup now that I've done the rim, just to make sure there's no raised places before I go lay my vinyl spots. And then I'm also gonna put the vinyl on the bottom. So I wanna make sure that there's no spots on the bottom also that would create any kind of bumps. Now I'm just measuring to make sure that I get the correct circle. And then I actually go in here into design space and just take a circle and make it the width that I need it. And then I'm just gonna apply the vinyl just carefully here. No trick here, just uh, trying to make sure that I don't get any air bubbles. Now we're just gonna add our leopard spots. And this is a pattern that I got from Bertrand's Digi Designs on Etsy. I love this pattern. I will link it for you guys below. I know a lot of people use this pattern. Um, and now she has a two-tone one that I'm super excited to use because I love two-tone leopard spots. So I'm very excited she's got that one. But if you guys watch any of my time lapses, you know that this is one of the things that I really struggle with. Um, maybe I'm a little OCD about things, and this happens to be one of them, but I really struggle with adding random leopard spots. I will put them on and take them off, and put them on and take them off, and put it on the turner, and look at it and go, oh, I don't really like that either, I'm, and I'll pull it back off and readjust them again. So I really struggle with this. I just kind of play around till I get them to look like I want them to look. So you guys find what works for you find what you like and just go with it 
And y'all, this vinyl is also from the Vinyl Cottage. Um, like I said before, I will link all the colors and her shop in the description box below. This color is so beautiful though. She had just gotten this in and I put it under epoxy and it was so sparkly, I could not believe it. So you guys definitely, this is a color. It's kind of, it doesn't really show up in the video either, the true color. It's more champagne where it wants to look yellow in a video. I do not know why that is. I've tried video to it in different lights. Um, adjusting the color and it always seems to look more yellow than it actually does in person. And then I like to throw a few little leopard spots on the bottom just for fun. Before I go into a coat of Quick Coat from CC DIY, I do like to apply a thin coat of this to any kind of holographic or foil vinyl. It does prevent lifting when you go to apply epoxy, and then I let that coat dry for about 30 minutes before I move into my final coat of epoxy. And for my final coat, I do use DIY's Artisan Art Regular Epoxy. I've mixed up here about 20 mLs, and that's what I'm going to cover this cup with. And then I am going to apply a little bit of heat with my torch. I use a burns matic TS4000 and just go over it really quick to pop any bubbles. And there you go. You've got my version of the Tanagram, the vinyl Tanagram. So I appreciate you guys watching. I hope you like the design. Please share any feedback. Ask any questions. Definitely show me your creations. I love seeing everybody else's version. And like, share, comment, subscribe. Follow me on social media. All that fun, crazy stuff. And I will see you guys soon.